What if all of us in the world discovered that we were threatened by an outer a power from outer space, from another planet? Wouldn't we all of a sudden find that we didn't have any differences between us at all? After one year's investigation, I believe that the flying saucers seen by a veteran airline and Air Force pilots are objects from another planet. The Air Force itself has officially admitted that flying saucers exist. Not only that, the Air Force has officially analyzed the motives of possible visitors in space. Here is a direct quotation from the official report. Such a civilization might observe that on Earth we now have atomic bombs and are fast developing rockets. In the past history of mankind, they should be alarmed. We should therefore expect at this time, above all, to behold such visitation. Gentlemen, the next war will not be an international war, but an intergalactic war. Many of our leaders, whom are also Freemasons, know we are at war with an extraterrestrial race. Now, many of you may not believe in flying saucers, but I have to. My father chased them for the government. What I'm about to show you is perhaps even more unbelievable. Did you know, for instance, that we have a United States Space Force? NASA footage clearly shows war efforts against extraterrestrials. As a matter of fact, most of our astronauts have encountered unusual events. July 27, 1952, a number of flying saucers were picked up on radar, flying over our nation's capital. A mere three weeks later, America established what was known as the National Security Agency, sometimes known as No Such Agency. It's the world's largest intelligence gathering community. They are credited with creating the internet and electromagnetic tape. Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. Army officers say the missile, found sometime last week, has been inspected at Roswell, New Mexico, and sent to Wright Field, Ohio, for further inspection. And in 1947, a flying saucer crashed near Roswell, New Mexico. Three months later, America established the Central Intelligence Agency. Known for its use of mind-altering technologies, under MKUltra, the CIA conducted memory experiments on thousands of unknowing people. They used LSD and other drugs, brainwashing, hypnosis, and many other mind control techniques. The CIA was established in a building known as the Tomb at Yale University. 
The tomb is also the temple of the Skull and Bones Society. Our president, uh, I mean, our president, who is also a member of the Skull and Bones, left on June of 2002 to announce to the world that we will have a missile defensive shield whether you like it or not. He was greeted at the airports as a Nazi. And a killer. And yes, even as Satan himself. But the deal was done. America officially backed out of the Strategic Arms Limitation Treaty and now has what can only be termed a force field over the country. But so do the Soviets, the Chinese, and a number of other countries as well. It was decided the control of the missile defensive shield would go to Cheyenne Mountain, Colorado Springs. This is where NORAD and Space Command are also stationed. So what is a missile defensive shield? HARP has been presented to the public as a program of scientific and academic research. U.S. documents, however, seem to suggest that HARP's main objective is to exploit the ionosphere for the Department of Defense. HARP stands for the High Frequency Active Rural Research Program. It is based in Gakona, Alaska. It is jointly managed by the U.S. Air Force and the U.S. Navy is part of a new generation of sophisticated weaponry under the U.S. Strategic Defense Initiative, otherwise known as Star Wars. Operated by the Air Force Research Laboratory Space Vehicles Directorate, HARP constitutes a system of powerful antennas capable of creating controlled local modifications of the ionosphere, which can disrupt human mental processes, jam all global communications, change weather patterns over large areas, interfere with wildlife migration patterns, negatively affect your health, and unnaturally in impact the Earth's upper atmosphere. Gene Manning and Dr. Nick Begich brought Hobb to the attention of the book with the book called Angels Don't Play This Harp. Dr. Nick Begich learn that HARP can manipulate global weather, hurt ecosystems, knock out electronic communications, and change moods and even mental states. He describes HARP as a super powerful radio wave beaming technology that lifts areas of the ionosphere by focusing a beam and heating those areas. Electromagnetic waves then bounce back onto Earth and penetrate everything living and dead. According to Dr. Bernard Eastland's patent, HARP can cause total disruption of communications over a very large portion of the Earth, disrupting not only land-based communications, but also airborne communications and sea communications as well. Can missile and or aircraft destruction deflection or confusion, and weather modification. Put simply, the apparatus is a reversal of a radio telescope, just transmitting instead of receiving. It will boil the upper atmosphere. Captain Tyler, director of the United States Navy Electromagnetic Radiation Project, states that effects which could be stimulated chemically could also be st stimulated electrically. With the right electromagnetic field, for example, you might be able to produce the same effects as psychoactive.